Hey guys, I'm back at it. You can tell by the overexposed background, it's beautiful fall weather. Time to get out there and shoot some videos. I got no specific training I'm going after right now. Actually, I'm not going to start that up till you know, probably December. So I want to go and explore some, some, some arrow tidbits. I'm going to be doing that in the field. I'm going to be using the CDA CRR app. I'll throw a video or a screenshot of that up here and a link down below where to get that. And uh, the various tools I'm going to implement with it to make sure I'm getting good data. Again, links down below. So yeah, I've never really done field testing. Kind of excited to do it. It's just, it's very tedious. Uh, it's hard to get good results, and around here, it's always, always windy. Now, I think with this app, you know, having wind speed on the bike, I'll be able to get good data. I got a good course I want to go try out. So yeah, I'm going to walk you through as I learn and implement these things. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can take something away from it. And if not, at least it'll be uh, entertaining to watch me try to succeed or fail. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned, and uh, let's get going. What do we need to run this app? Really, I don't think you need anything other than a speed sensor with a magnet and AMP Plus compatible Android phone. And you can get to it. To get better data, if you don't want to go on windless days or worry about cars passing you, you can add a um, add wind speed to the bike. And the guy they recommend for that is this uh, weather meter. And again, the link's down below. It's just a little guy, um, not very big at all. You can see, um, I, I wish I had a banana to, to do a size comparer, but, uh, but don't. The way I'm going to mount this to the bike, I have an old K-Edge um, Garmin deal that I've pulled the, the, uh, the Garmin insert out, and I've installed a GoPro adapter in there, and it's mounted to the bullhorn on the bike, and uh, we'll go over there in just a second and you know show you how that set up and then the next thing is uh, in the bottom of this guy quarter by 20 um, standard camera mount deal and we just got a GoPro adapter slide that guy in and it's got an adjustable base so we can make sure that we're we're, we're pointed into the wind and uh, I'm guessing there's a front and back to this and the power buttons on the front I'm not 100% sure but I'll make sure to check that before we get out on the road so yeah, that's, uh, that's that. Um, speed sensor. I got me a um, Wahoo speed and cadence. I don't need cadence. I'm going to mount it on the front fork because I got spokes on that wheel. Uh, there's no spokes on the rear wheel. So yeah, uh, that's about it. Two things you need. And I have a Samsung um, S8 uh, that uh, I have the app loaded up on. So the phone, you're going to need the phone in an accessible area on the bike. Don't want to put it on the base bar, I don't think. I'm going to try to mount it on the extension. I have a quad lock coming um, sometime this week. Right now I have this, uh, I don't know, multifunction mobile phone holder. I'll throw a link down below. You know, if I think it works out good, we'll see. It's just a silicone deal that wraps around the bar. So I'm not sure if that's going to work for me or not. Anyhow, let's get, uh, get that stuff thrown on. All right, easy enough stuff. I've got the K-Edge sitting right here. Bolts are underneath. It's a uh, standard bar mount 31.8. I just took a rubber adapter from, I think, GoPro? I don't know, from something, and shoved it in here. You can see it. It's pretty stable. It does cock it off to the side some, so that's a good reason to have an adjustable pedestal on your uh, and a monitor. And so, yeah, that's this is pretty simple setup. I, I think you want to kind of center mass on arrow. Um, I got a lot of bike underneath me, and I don't get too high on this bike. First, I'm going to try out without putting anything in it uh, or any extension. So it's just a simple fact of sliding that guy in there, getting deal, make sure she's facing in. All right, you see it's pretty easy to set that up. Um, hardest part was probably putting on the K-Edge. It sits kind of low right now. It's maybe even with the uh, the extensions. Um, so might want to 
get it a little bit higher, get a little bit more relevant data, I guess, or, you know. But we'll see. I'll go out and run out and uh, we'll do some trial and error. I do have a, a swivel deal for the GoPro that um, probably give me about another three or four inches in height, which would probably put level with, uh, with arms, which I, is probably center mass uh, for me going through the wind. So this is the, um, the phone mount, just, just silicone. This guy was, was pretty cheap, so I figured I'd, I'd give it a try. And what I'm thinking is we're just gonna, we're gonna mount this guy right here below the, uh, below the Garmin. All right, so the Wahoo is pretty straightforward. I'm sure you guys have all uh, mounted these up before. Because I'm putting it on the fork, uh, this is pretty blunt in here, uh, the rubber padding. So I stole my arrow seat post uh, adapter off my, um, what is it, Light and Motion uh, Viz 180. And I'm just going to overlap them like so. Um, get some zip ties and then throw it down on the fork. Might actually go uh, on this side so the, uh, the logo is facing out. Gotta, gotta represent, right? So anyhow, we'll go ahead and throw those on with some zip ties and then the magnet, self-explanatory, it just screws onto the, uh, the blade of the spoke there. And uh, yeah, I think that's all we have to do as far as install. All right, good morning, folks. It's uh, Sunday morning. Um, currently 10 minutes to 6. Uh, sunrise, I think, is at uh, 7.05. Should be getting some light here uh, shortly. But uh, a few reasons for being up this early, and this is why uh, field testing is such a pain in the ass. One, wind is low. Right now, I mean, I don't even feel anything. Uh, it's pretty calm. Two, traffic. Don't want a bunch of bunch of cars out there whoops bike almost hit the ground don't want a bunch of cars out there you know messing with data or with uh with me <laughs> uh it's a pretty nice venue it's got um very wide shoulders they're about six seven feet wide cars you know passing me isn't isn't that big of a deal as far as safety but it is in terms of uh, don't want to mess with uh with the data at all and uh and yeah so this is also a new neighborhood, um, still under construction. As if anybody you know has any kind of uh, knowledge about Northern Virginia, that's all we do is build houses out here. So even on Sundays they're working. Um, so construction traffic will start to roll out here um, early morning, thinking like in between eight and eight a.m., nine a.m., somewhere around there. So I want to avoid those um, those big trucks. And uh, and yeah, so that's why we're up early gonna get to it gonna set up my stuff and and see uh, see uh, if we can get some good data notes this thing's awesome I don't know why I didn't race with it all year got a clock back pretty good and I think it's a it, it's actually got a better field of view than the than the pock especially to the sides the peripherals ridiculous um, obviously the lens goes all the way around you know people saying it's hot it's no hotter than the pock it actually has better airflow around the ears and, uh, and face um, worn like this so, uh, at least for me, uh, I, this is going to be my go-to helmet. It, <laughs> crazy enough, it feels faster. We'll see what the data says um, 
a pro tip, uh, make sure your shit works before you leave the house. And uh, I checked everything yesterday except for Cadence. And it seems that um, the CDA CRR app um, requires Cadence to, um, to not reject the lap. Unfortunately, it looks like it's trying to get Cadence from the speed sensor that I mounted down on the fork. Yeah, that's got no Cadence. A power to max was also giving me problems this morning. It seems the battery contacts were a little bit messed up. Um, corrected that. That's why you bring your tools to the field. Yeah, so I'm just going to continue to log trips, um, get some workout. Um, in this morning, burn some calories, and then um, either go into um, my CDA app and, and see what I can pull out there, uh, analyze in the files or in the Golden Cheetah's Aero Lab. Um, hopefully, uh, the wind speed um, will log. This was just my B run with this guy, so I'm going to switch back to, uh, to the POC with A and do some more runs. Um, a few tips uh, you want to try to track the same line. I threw down some tape on the road so then my start stop will be as close as I can get it. You want to stay in one gear so find a gear that uh, that works for you. You actually want to pedal the entire time you're you're out here whether you're putting out watts or not you can soft pedal uh, so that you're turning over zero watts but your cadence is actually um, registering. Even through the roundabout I'm, I'm pedaling I'm, I'm able to actually stay aero too and I'm going through it faster and faster so getting more comfortable I guess uh, doing tight uh, radiuses uh, like that. Um, yeah, stay in one gear. Um, unfortunately, you know, because of my loop, it's a little half pipe here, so um, going out, it uh, I can get up to speed pretty quick. Um, but then I kind of I start <laughs> lugging it up that bit, and then coming down, I, I got a lot of speed going, so I'm actually. Uh, uh, spinning out pretty good down here um, yeah so make sure you're, you're you know you're holding your position I use a couple uh, couple cues shoulders touching my uh, my cheekbones here and uh, the uh, the top of the visor sighting first index finger um, is actually at the top of the visor uh, that's my head down position I actually race a lot like that in, in, in peak I'm not even gonna bother doing the peak I just want to see the uh, the heads down I, I mean I know it's faster <laughs> it's raced faster so uh, so yeah so gonna get back to it okay couple uh, screenshots of uh, if today um, rolling the video uh, just previously so this is the uh, POC head down position and actually it looks like I'm starting to peek a little bit to see where the line is uh, at this point you can see the anemometer here and the cell phone is right underneath my arm I think in the next shot you'll be able to see it alright so here's the next shot so the uh, the arrowhead you clearly see the phone now and actually brighter you can see see the course you can see how it's a half pipe start finish is actually just out of screen here anyways let's um let's look at the data so, here's what we got. So these are the clean runs. Run 8, 12, 14, 15. Had some issues in between there. None of the runs previous to this worked because unfortunately I had a power cal, a heart rate monitor, and I didn't check the ID, and that's the power it was using, so there was no cadence. So all my runs that I was trying to run weren't working. When I finally realized that I had wattage and I wasn't stepping on the cranks. Uh, I checked the ID and sure enough it was wrong. So got the power power to max hooked up and then everything was good to go. Don't ask me which is Arrowhead and which is the POC. It, it really doesn't matter. They're they're pretty much the same. I mean if you look here we got 203 CDA, a 202 apparent, 208, 204, 209, 204, 213, 197. Apparent is you know I guess without wind. Um, and CDA is actually what I was I was seeing out on the course. Um, when you look at the different runs, you can see that I'm pretty consistent. This mess up here is actually the turnaround, the roundabout. Um, this is where you know I was looking over my shoulder and you know looking at pedestrians crossing, um, whatever the case may be there. So that's why it's not as clean um, as as the lead ins here. And then also here I'm starting the lap and down on this end I'm ending the lap 
Um, so there's a little bit of, of, uh, of error down in there. And some of these look better than others. But what I like the takeaway here is they all look really, really consistent. So I'm holding similar position. The data I'm getting is, is, is pretty good, I think. I mean, we're pretty, pretty close here. Had some cars pass me going the other way on a few runs, which is, is going to skew some stuff. There are lots, lots of laps in here. Six laps, seven laps, five laps, eight laps. So I'm definitely, you know, doing a good bit. I think, you know, these two, uh, I, I'm pretty confident this is the arrowhead here. And I'm pretty confident this is, um, this here run eight is the, uh, is the POC. But I could be off. Could be arrowhead as well, and then POC, POC, I don't know. But what I do know, what I, what I'm taking away, at least from what I was seeing on the screen in the app, was that, yeah, I mean, they're within earshot of each other. You know, they're, they're, they're stepping on each other. Might be a watt here, a watt there. I know in the tunnel, they were even uh, at zero and five, and the POC had a slight advantage at two and a half. That could have been me not holding my position. That just could have been the POC's better at two and a half. And the reality is when you get out on the road, that advantage at two and a half is negligible and it ends up being the same thing. So yeah, um, pretty good takeaways. You, you you saw earlier in the video where I was, I was talking about before I realized that the power, power to max was an issue. The tips to make this app work correctly. But really you just need to get miles in. I mean, just lap after lap after lap. This is where going to the tunnel is so much simpler and cost effective from a time standpoint. And your time is precious to you as mine is, then there's really a huge advantage going to the tunnel because you can swap helmet from helmet from helmet. You have a screen in front of you with your position sharpied on it. So, uh, you know, you know you're holding the same position. But, you know, I talked about it in, in the video. There's, there's some markers you can do, like how you hold your head, your sight line with your hands. You know, I use my, uh, I said my cheekbones in the video, but it's actually in my jawbones. I'm, I'm touching my shoulders to, you know, the back of my jawbones. Um, you know, those things to make sure you're holding the same position while you're rolling down the road. I mean, it's important. You do those things out on the road and you can get good, good data. The problem with this app, and hopefully it gets added, we can we can snip this stuff like in here, right? So, you know, we could maybe start and stop the lap a little bit uh, before and after, and then the turnaround up here, which is, you know, where all the elevation actually is, we can get rid of that, right? And then we're only looking at this clean stuff in here. I mean, this looks a little messy there, but, you know, that can give you a little bit better indication, right? You wouldn't have so, I mean, like right here, that's a mess. That's the kind of stuff that this app is like uh, almost there. You, you, you take that out and, or you add in that ability to snip this out, which I, I, I'm not sure how you would do that. Um, I know how I can go into, you know, a fit file and get rid of it or a CSV file and get rid of it. Um, in this app, I'm not sure. And all these screenshots are from the app. They're from the CDA, CRR app. And I haven't messed with that second component yet, CRR. This is with, I think a standard, I think I threw in like 350 or something. I was running race setup as you can see from the, uh, running a race setup as you can see from the, uh, the, the screenshots earlier, you know, the 321 disc, the deep front. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it went this morning even though I blew away the first and probably best hour when there was like zero traffic zero wind but yeah I definitely recommend this app if you guys have the time and the wherewithal to get out there and, and do some testing go for it the the anemometer it it definitely takes out the wind equation so when the wind did pick up I was still getting repeatable numbers so yeah I'm pretty happy with it and I'll be uh doing more videos, doing some tests in between road helmets and TT helmets, thinking of, um, of picking up a new front wheel. We'll see if that comes to fruition or not. And if it does, you know, we'll throw that up there. And then the CARR component, we're going to we're gonna get into the rolling resistance. So, yeah, I uh, hope you guys got some good info from that. And if not, at least you realize 
this isn't as easy as it looks. Um, you know, I was up early, make sure I get out there with you know low wind conditions and low traffic on a Sunday morning, no less. I exceeded expectations in, in the early part. I was sitting out there for like 40 minutes, waiting for the sun to come up. Probably should have took some lights with me. But yeah, the the only thing I'm really not happy with at this juncture is uh, the the phone mount. That's just it's too floppy. The the, the cheap deal I got. Hopefully the quad lock's going to be um, more stable. Problem is, it's also a lot higher. Uh, so I don't think I'm gonna be happy with that either, but we'll we'll see see if I can rig something up keep it out of the air and uh, And that's another thing the the Anemometer I need to get that higher. It's I think it's too low. It's definitely not center of, of, of drag mass Maybe three or four inches needs to come up a few tweaks here and there and and I'm not disappointed with these numbers. We'll keep playing with it. Hey there, did you enjoy that video you just watched? Well, if you did, make sure to hit that like button right there. Also, if you enjoy the content that I'm putting out, make sure to subscribe to the channel. You can do that below as well. You'll find that button right down there. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.